So you're looking for a new Mac, and whether you go with the M2 MacBook Air or the M2 MacBook Pro, or you're waiting for the holy grail computer, the M2 MacBook Air that's 15 inches, you need to know how much RAM you need for your workflow. Well, in this video, I'm gonna help you out. Now, unlike the PC, where you can just buy some RAM sticks, and if you need more RAM, at some point you can just throw more in your system with Apple's new system on the chip, that is not possible. So you really need to make the right decision because what you'll end up doing is buying a machine that doesn't have enough RAM, it won't work for your workflow, and then you'll put it on the used market, you'll take a hit, you'll have to buy another one. What we wanna do is buy once, cry once, whenever we're working with tech. So first we need to figure out what RAM is. Now RAM is short for random access memory. It's what your system uses when it's using little short spurts of memory. So think of it like, opening tabs in Chrome or how many programs you can have open or small little settings that it needs to access really, really quick. You don't store files on RAM. You don't put movies on RAM. RAM is something that your system uses to remember the state of the system. But anybody who's done a creative workflow knows that that RAM can get eaten up so fast. So how does Apple's system on the chip work? How does it deal with it when your RAM gets too overloaded? Well, that's where Apple introduced swap memory. Swap memory is when your RAM fills up all the way and the system decides what to put on the memory because their their ssds are really fast what it puts on the ssds and what it puts on the actual ram now one way to visualize this is if you have two cups one of them is filled with water and you pour the water in and as soon as you pour the water out that goes away completely it's clear again you could use that cup again that clear cup with water is like your ram now the other one is the swap storage right so you have this cup that's filled up with milk and when you're done with the milk you leave the cup there and there's all this stuff left over from the milk inside that milk will harden and if you're some kind of weird disgusting fool and you do that over and over and over again eventually the cup is going to look like it's just solid milk well that in essence is what swap memory is like that cup of milk the more that you use it the, the remnants of the old files are there and at some point that swap memory really does degrade the value of your ssd so in order to avoid that you need to have the right amount of ram in your system for whatever workflow you're going to do so i want to keep this real short and sweet for you guys so that the information is helpful so let's talk about workflows and how much RAM you need. The first workflow is an office workflow where you're just really using the office suite. Maybe you're using Google Sheets and all that kind of stuff. You're going on Chrome a little bit. You're watching some Netflix. You're watching some YouTube. Just a regular average user. For that person, I always suggest getting 16 gigabytes of RAM if you can afford it. But if not, 8 gigabytes of RAM is going to do you just fine. The swap memory on these machines is fast you won't even notice a difference. Now, a quick caveat, just make sure you don't buy the base model of SSD storage on these machines. Apple's had some problem with that recently, and so I think it's wise just to get one step up. The next workflow is creative workflow. Now, that happens to be my workflow. My main driver is the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and that I have 16 gigabytes of RAM on, and I've never had a problem. So if you're doing photo editing or video editing, I, I do 422 10-bit 4K footage whenever I do a video, and that that I've never seen my RAM have any kind of issue. But if you wanna future-proof yourself a little bit, and that's always a, a good decision to make, go to the 32 gigs of RAM. If you go to 32 gigs of RAM, you can have multiple things open a lot of times, even with 16 though, I'll still have Photoshop open, I'll have uh, Final Cut Pro open, sometimes I'll even actually throw in uh, Descript. I can have a lot of stuff open and it still does just fine. And for the final workflow, a 3D workflow, if you're a 3D artist, that is a really, really, really heavy workflow. I would suggest anything from 32 gigs to 64 gigs of RAM minimum. Now for a lot of people, if you're in a 3D workflow, you're probably not using an Apple product. A lot of you guys create these really awesome Threadripper workstations on uh, the, the PC side. But if you are going to stay in the Mac ecosystem, I definitely say, man, 64 gigabytes of RAM because 3D work, you also get paid a lot of money for. So I hope this is helpful. If you're an office worker, get eight. If you're creative, get 16 to 32. And if you're a 3D worker, get 32 to 64. It's going to be a good option. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. That always helps YouTube know that this is a quality video that was helpful. Subscribe to the channel. This is a pretty brand new channel. It would help out a ton. Guys, check out this video that YouTube's going to suggest over here. And I will see you all in the next one.